Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Creating a First Eclipse Project. By watching this video, you will learn how to start an Eclipse project. You will learn how to add Java classes to your Eclipse project. And you'll learn how to run your project in Eclipse. For this lesson, we're going to create a simple Java application that is illustrated by this UML class diagram. In this diagram, you can see two classes depicted. This means that we'll create two Java files, one for each of the Java classes in our diagram. One will be called Payment. This will simply hold a main method that will let us run the program. The more detailed class diagram is for the class called Person, and you can see in this class diagram that it will have three class level variables and then it will have several methods. Note that there will be more getters and setters than are listed in this diagram. These were just abbreviated for brevity. Please keep in mind that in this lesson we are really concentrating on how Eclipse can be used to create Java classes. We will save more detailed discussion of actual Java code for later lessons in the course. We'll start with Eclipse open in the basic Java perspective. To start a new project, you can start from the File menu and choose the New option. Then, you look for Java Project. Note that on my Eclipse installation, the Java Project option is listed here. If you do not see an option that you are looking for, you can always go to Other. And in Other, you can search and browse until you find the type of things that you are interested in creating. In this case, we are creating a basic Java project, but there are many other types of components that you can create in Eclipse. Eclipse will automatically create the basic component that you choose, including behind-the-scenes code. So it's important to select the correct component that you want. Whether you started from the original New Menu options or accessed it through the Other dialog, you'll still get the same page after hitting the Next button. Keep in mind that you generally want to review carefully and fill out carefully all of the dialogs when creating a project component in Eclipse because this will make sure that your component is created right the first time. A basic Java component has one of the simplest dialog sequences to complete. Here we are going to simply type in the project name. We'll call it Employee Payment. And for the rest of the items on the page, we'll accept the default values that are already filled in on the dialog. For a quick look at the next page, click Next. Here we see that we are going to have the employee payment project level, and then below that in the hierarchy there will be a folder called Source, abbreviated SRC. And this is where our Java classes will be stored. After completing and reviewing all of the dialog pages, click Finish, and your project is created. You can explore it over in the Package Explorer by expanding the project. To do this, just click on the arrows to the left of the component names in the Project Explorer window. You'll notice that we have a source folder for our Java classes and our basic JRE system library. In general, it's a bad idea to store your Java classes directly in the source folder. Instead, you should create one or more Java package folders in which to store your Java class files. I'm going to do that now. I'll start by right-clicking on the source folder and selecting New from the pop-up menu. Then look for and select the package component. Fill out the dialog by giving your package a name. The name should logically describe the collection of classes that you will store in the package. For this project, I'll call the package Payroll Library. Recall that we are going to create two classes for this simple project. A Payment class and a Person class. Since the Person class is required, in order for the Payment class to do its thing, we're going to create the Person class first. Also, most of the work is in the Person class, as we can see by the UML class diagram. We're going to start by creating the class, then we'll add the fields, and finally the methods. Remember, the focus is on how we do this in Eclipse and not necessarily on the Java code. 
so I'm going to talk about Java things minimally and focus on features of Eclipse. When we created our employee payment project, we went to the File, New menu option. Generally, I prefer that when I'm creating new objects that go into or are contained within a project to start from the Package Explorer and right-click on the folder where I intend to put the item that I am going to create. In this way, I get the benefit of the location automatically being placed within the dialog. So, right-click on our package in the Source folder and choose New. And from the list, you should see Class. If you do not see it here, go into Other and browse for the class item. Again, because we are creating something new, we see a dialog form. Be sure to always look at everything on the form. Check that it's what you want and change those things that need to be changed. In this case, I'm simply going to change the name of the class. I'll call it Person. I'm going to leave the modifier public. I right-clicked on the package in the source folder to put it where I wanted it to be. Note the superclass. It inherits from the java.lang.object, which every class that you create in Java will inherit from. In this case, I do not need a main. That will be in the other class that we will create. I can just take the defaults for everything else. Click Finish, and you will see in just a moment that your class will appear in the Editor section of Eclipse. Now, a Java class is probably the simplest thing that you can create in Eclipse. So the code that is generated based on the form that you fill out is very minimal. There's not much there. Simply a package statement showing where the class is stored and the public class person statement to indicate that this is a Java class called person. As you'll see in a moment, there are some very nice features that you can use in Eclipse to create this Java class very quickly. We must start, though, by identifying the fields that we will include in the class. Let's take a quick look back at our UML class diagram to remind ourselves what we need to create. We're going to have a first name field, which is a string, the last name field, also a string, and an hourly rate, which is double, and this would be the amount of payment that each person will be paid for each hour worked. Back in Eclipse in the editor, we see that the items typed into the editor are color-coded. Java keywords are kind of purple on my screen. Place the cursor inside the Java class between the braces. We'll start by declaring our first name string. So, in general, to enter things into the Eclipse editor, place the cursor where you want it and start typing. You'll notice several features in the editor, such as the underlines. Underlines usually give you warnings about the code that you have typed. You'll have warnings in yellow and errors noted in red underlines. If code is underlined in yellow, then it's generally a warning that, hey, there might be something wrong with your code. That's noticed by the editor. In this case, there is no real problem. I've declared this variable, but I have not yet written anything to use it. So it's warning me that it may never be read. We'll fix that when we add methods. As I've added the second one, I'm going to pause for a moment to show you how an error message appears in the editor. Notice that the error is underlined in red. In this case, I've simply left off the semicolon. If I put the cursor over the code that is underlined in red, an error message will appear. In this case, it tells me syntax error. Insert the semicolon to complete the field declaration. I do that and I see that the error disappears. Let's enter the last field hourly rate, which will be double. Notice also that I am following Java naming conventions. A convention is a standard way for naming things that everyone in the profession will use and that makes it easier for people who are used to Java to read your code, for you later to identify the difference between variables and classes, and other reasons related to code generation. So stick to naming conventions as much as you can. This Java naming convention is known as camel case. The camel case convention for variables is that you always start with the lowercase letter on the first word of the variable name. 
If there are multiple words in your variable name, we will concatenate or bunch them up together. And then any successive word will start with an uppercase letter. For classes, we follow similar rules, but the first letter is capitalized. So you can easily see that person is a class very quickly and first name is a variable because I have followed standard naming conventions. Let's revisit our UML class diagram to remind ourselves what we need to do next. In general, a class diagram is a blueprint for what we want to create. So we can see that so far we have created three of the items on our list, the first name, the last name, and the hourly rate fields. Next, let's work on the constructors. As you can see, we're going to have two constructors, one called person that takes no arguments, the second called person, but with three arguments. The first one will be our default constructor, which we'll use to initialize our field variables to some arbitrary default values. The second one will allow someone who uses the class to actually enter in variables for the first name, last name, and hourly rate as soon as they begin creating an object of the person class. Back in Eclipse, we see that we have our class with the three variables declared. Let's look at a nice feature of Eclipse that will let us create a constructor very quickly. Click on the source menu. Notice that there are several lines down the source menu that start with the word generate generate getters and setters, and so forth. Let's select the one that says generate constructor using fields. These code generation features let us create very quickly some of the most common elements of a Java class by simply filling out a form. We can use this one to create a constructor using fields or, if we deselect them all, make a constructor that does not use the fields. Let's do this one first. This will be our default constructor. I'm going to deselect them all. I'm going to check my insertion point so that I put it where I want in the class. In this case, it will be after my hourly rate. Or, I can also click here and choose to put it after the last member. I generally find this to be the safest because I do things in a certain order and I know it's going to be at the end of the class. But if you forget something and want to place it, you can choose exactly where you want from this list. We'll leave everything else as default. Always check on these forms to make sure that it's what you want in any particular case. Once you have the form filled out, hit Generate. Notice that Eclipse automatically created some code for us. It added some comments, and Eclipse has also created the stub for our default constructor. As I mentioned, I'm going to simply use this constructor to set default values for my field level variables. Let's start by typing the word this. This is a keyword that refers to this Java class. Right after the word this, hit the period. Another nice feature of Eclipse is that once you have an object that can be identified, if you hit dot or period, Eclipse will look ahead and it will try to figure out what you want next. And it will pop up a menu that will show you the options that you have. In this case, notice that my fields are all listed on the pop-up menu. So I'm going to highlight the first name, Click it, and it pops into the space there in my editor. Now I'll add the equal, and let's say Jane. Let's do the same thing for last name. This dot, select last name from the list, equal Doe. Now you've got to be careful with the period. If you keep typing this dot last name, you'll probably pass by the menu very quickly without seeing it. So it's up to you whether you want to utilize that function of Eclipse. It's usually best to hit the period and then pause. I think to reduce errors, it's better to use the menu because you know that you're going to have exactly what was declared in your variable declaration statement without mistyping. We'll get the hourly rate and let's set that to $10. Okay, very quickly our first constructor has been created. Let's use the same feature to construct or to create our second constructor. So let's pick Generate Constructor using Fields. This time, however, let's leave all of our fields checked. Everything else, we'll double check those. Let's make it the last member to come at the end. Select Public, choose all of these, and then click Generate. Now we're cooking. Look at this constructor. All of the lines have been created for us. If somebody uses this constructor, they will provide the first name, last name, and hourly rate as inputs to the constructor. 
and then the lines for setting our field variables will set each field variable equal to the values that were passed in through the method parameters. Just a reminder, having two or more methods with the same method name as we do with these constructors is called overloading in Java terminology. At the moment, we have a significant amount of text in our Java class. So one thing that I frequently like to do is simply to click on the Save button in the icon bar in order to make sure it's saved. This is something that you should just get in the habit of doing frequently. Every once in a while, add a little code and then save. Let's have a quick look at our UML class diagram again. Now we have five items created. Let's work on the getters and setters for our person class. Back in Eclipse, you might recall that when we went to the source menu, there were a number of generate options, and one of those was generate getters and setters. Let's use that to create in one fell swoop the getters and setters for all of our class level field variables. Click on generate getters and setters. Note that you can select all of them. You can deselect all. You can select just a get for a particular field. Or if you hit the top level of the hierarchy, you can select both the get and the set for a particular field. I'm going to select all. Double check the insertion point. I prefer to have fields in getter setter pairs. For instance, get first name and set first name will be together in my class. These will be public. I'll generate method comments, even though at this point I may not enter many comments. Then I'm going to hit Generate. So click Generate and watch what happens to the person.java file that you're creating. Look at that. Very quickly, by selecting a menu option, filling out the form, we've created very basic getters and setters for our class. This means that we have only two more methods to create to finish the person class. Another quick look at our UML class diagram and we see that we are almost finished. We still have left the getPayment method and the toString method. I'm going to skip to the toString method because we have yet one more generate that we can use to create the toString. And then we'll work on the getPayment method. So back in Eclipse, click on Source, go to Generate, and this time pick toString. The toString method is generally a method that you can use to return a string that shows the name of the class and the current state of the class, meaning the variable values of the fields. You can have it show much more information in the toString if you prefer, but I'm going to just select the fields. Make sure it's inserted as the last member. Generate some comments. I'll take the default string format. You can actually format that any way you want. We'll choose code style as string concatenation. Play around with that if you'd like to see if another way of formatting the string is more to your taste. I'll keep the defaults for everything else. Click Generate. And now you see a toString method. When toString is called, a string that shows what the current values of first name, hourly rate, and last name will be provided. We'll use that in our main method in a little while to test our person class. Finally, I have one more method to create. This is our getPayment method. For the getPayment method, I will have to provide a number of hours as an integer, and then I will return the payment as a double. This is the only method in this class that I am going to have to type. Public, double, getPayment. I'll provide one parameter for this method. Int, I'll call it hours because whoever uses this method will need to provide the number of hours worked. Notice that at the moment I have an error. Although I'm quite confident in the code as written, let's see what the error message says. Recall that you put the cursor over top of either the underlined portion or over in the margin. You'll see the error message. This method must return a result of type double. Also, you'll notice that there are quick fixes available. This error, of course, is because I have not yet written a return statement, and in my method stub, I have indicated that I need to return a double value. When I put the cursor over the error message, I can choose one of the quick fixes. I have to be careful, though, and know what they are. But eventually, you learn that for certain errors, there is often a list of things that you can do to correct them. And once you know what needs to be done at that point, add a return statement or change the return type to void, you can intelligently pick from the list. Double click on add return statement. The error is gone. Now this return statement is not exactly what I need. 
And here is one of the dangers of choosing from the quick fix list. Eclipse will assume that you need to return something it knows about. And in this method, the only local variable that it knows is the hours that we've declared as an argument for the method. So Eclipse assumes that the thing you want to return is the only variable that it knows about called hours. But this is incorrect. I need a formula that calculates a payment. Let's take out hours. What we're going to return is going to be the hourly rate times the number of hours. We can do that by typing this dot, choose hourly rate, times the hours. This will multiply hourly rate times hours and return the result. Now anytime someone calls get payment, they provide the number of hours and you get the amount of payment for the week. Click on save to save our person class. One last look at our UML class diagram shows us that to run our project, we need to create a payment class. Inside the payment class, we will create a main method. A main method is required by all Java programs. This is where, when you select run for the program, the code is placed in the main method that will run to get it started. So once again, let's get to Eclipse and let's start creating our main class. Right click on the folder that we're going to put the class in, select new, then class. We're going to name this class payment, double check everything else. We're going to take the defaults from pretty much everything else on this form except let's select public static void main in order to make sure that the main is generated. Do that and hit finish. Payment was created and it created a stub for our method called main. The to do comment is pretty nice. It's a feature in Eclipse that I'll show you later, but it will look at any comment called to do and will display a nice to do list we can see in one of the tabbed areas that we can add to the bottom of our perspective. For now, let's just erase that comment and add code that we can use to test our person class. I'm simply going to create a person object. I'll use the default constructor for this one. If I use the default constructor, I want to use setters to set the field values. Let's start with first name. Notice that I hit dot after typing person. And I can then type a letter if I want to narrow the field of what's listed. After that, I can simply select the method that I want, such as set first name. Let's provide a value. I'll call this one Victor. I can then set the last name in the same way. Finally, I can set the hourly rate. Let's just make that $10 per hour. Now that I have my person object declared and instantiated, I'd like to print its values to the console to see if it's working. The console is the area at the bottom of your Eclipse perspective, and it's a great place to show system output of your program. To do that, we'll use the line system.out.println. The default out for your Java class in Eclipse is the console at the bottom of the Eclipse perspective. Well, let's see that my class has been created correctly by calling the toString method to print out the class values. Let's also test get payment. Type system.out.println again. And this time call the get payment method and pass in 40 hours. It's a very basic program, but we made something that will actually work and show us some output. When I run this program, it's going to look for a main method. In the main method, we'll create a person object, print the state of the current object to the console. We'll then get and print the 40 hour weekly payment to the console. To run this project, right click on employee payment in the package explorer. In the menu, select run as, and since this is a Java application, select that from the pop-up menu. If you were paying close attention, you may have noticed down in the corner that it was running and then after the program execution was completed, we now see the results in the console. Recall that Victor has a $10 per hour payment and he's worked 40 hours for this week, so the payment is $400. It looks like it's all working well. 
So you've created your first Java project in Eclipse and you've tested it. Watch other videos to get better at building Eclipse projects. For more information about how to build Java applications in Eclipse, please look at the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. This has been a Piercy production.